Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they, told her, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. And the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round the door, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, and he would not allow them to speak because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him, and when they found him, they said, Everybody's looking for you. He answered, Let us go elsewhere, to the neighboring country towns, so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. The good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The words of Job, I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. Wow. Job is filled with restlessness until the dawn. Beloved in Christ, if, if any one of you suffer from insomnia or generally encounter difficulties falling asleep at night, or you are deeply worried and fretting about a matter that gives you racing thoughts at nights and cannot fall asleep, then you can identify with the feelings of restlessness until the dawn expressed by Job in the first reading. Beloved, restlessness is characteristics of our human nature of the world. We observe restlessness in volcanoes and rivers and seas. We observe restlessness um, among and within teenagers who are overproducing hormones. We see parents who are restless awaiting the birth of their children. We observe restlessness among persons waiting for medical results or waiting for promotion at work or waiting for an increase in sales or increase in business. We see restlessness among athletes who are rearing to explode on the sports field. So beloved, restlessness is a state of uncontrollable or fiery energy waiting to be exploded. Today's scripture readings, beloved in Christ, remind us that our restlessness is a gift from God. Our restlessness is a gift from God that can be managed, channeled, and utilized for the kingdom of God. Let's reflect on these readings. Job's restlessness until dawn is generated by a real human and spiritual crisis that Job is experiencing. On the human level, Job grieves deeply because he has lost his children, he has lost his property, he has lost his good health. On the spiritual level, Job is rooted in a religious tradition that argues that bad things happen in your life as it is a sign of God's punishment because you have sinned. Furthermore, beloved, this religious belief is being reinforced by Job's friends who argues with him and is telling him, Job, you have sinned. You need to repent. 
But Job knows that he is a righteous man, and as he reflects on his life, he cannot identify anything that is of worth that would cause God to punish him. And so Job laments. His laments, beloved in Christ, are really sad words of sleepless hopelessness. Imagine Job saying, remember that my life is like wind. I shall not see happiness again. Job's restlessness, however, beloved in Christ, is not without hope. Like a prisoner awaiting parole, Job's restlessness is an anxiety to escape it, an anxiety for freedom, to be liberated. Beloved in Christ, Paul's restlessness is generated by harsh criticism he receives on his position of not taking monetary payment from converts, unlike those who succeeded him. And so the members of the Corinthian community is telling that you need to charge these converts for your preaching. In defending his pastoral position, Paul argues that he has a restlessness, an urgency for preaching the gospel to become all things to all in order to save. In a word, Paul is telling the Corinthians that he's channeling his restless energy into the preaching of the good news. He's channeling his restless energy into adapting and adjusting himself to be able to reach a diversity of people of every age, socioeconomic background, religious and gender. Paul refuses to channel his restless energy in getting payment. He says the gospel is free, and that's what he's called to do. And so he has this restless energy, energy like Jesus to preach the gospel. In the gospel, beloved in Christ, Mark identifies Jesus' restlessness in the opening verse. Listen to what Mark says. Mark says, on leaving the synagogue, what did Jesus do? Did he go home and have pizza? Did he go home and sleep? No, Mark says, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew. Jesus waits, wastes no time. He's anxious, he's restless. Jesus channels his, his, his restlessness into becoming present to the human condition similar to what Job is experiencing. The human condition of brokenness and loss. That human condition that Job describes as, my life is like a wind, I shall not see happiness again. All the people with whom Jesus encounters, those who are sick with diseases and possessed, they could identify with Job in saying their life is like a wind and I shall not see happiness. And so Jesus channels his restlessness in becoming present to these people. In channeling his restlessness to be present, Jesus does so in three ways. First, Jesus channels his restlessness in forming, nourishing, maintaining friendships. Friendships for Jesus is not a diversion, but friendships for Jesus is a way in which he encounters God in flesh and blood. Consequently, immediately upon leaving the synagogue, where did he go? He went to the house of Simon and Andrew. He went to visit. He went to nurture his friendship. Jesus' restlessness goes into friendships. Second, Jesus channels his restlessness into becoming present to human brokenness. 
such as illness and diseases and those possessed with evil. And for Jesus, he's present to them not to solve their problems, as many thought he was. But he's present to them in order to become a channel of God's redemptive love. And so what he does, he lays his hands on them. He lays his hands on the mother-in-law of Simon. He lays his hands on those who were possessed, those who were like Job, who felt that happiness will not return to their life. Jesus channels his energy, his restless energy, to be present to them. Third, Jesus channels his restlessness into nurturing and maintaining and practicing solitude. For Jesus, solitude means does not mean isolating himself from people's brokenness. But for so Jesus, solitude means discovering and nurturing his relationship with God. And that is why he gets up early in the morning and he does what? He goes off to pray. Jesus' restlessness, beloved in Christ, is not confined, does not confine him to one place. It does not confine him to one ministry of healing. Jesus' restlessness is communicated to disciples when he says, listen, when they said to him, um, everyone is looking for you. Everyone in this village is looking for you. And, you know, let's go and minister to them. And Jesus says, no. He says what? Let us go where? To nearby villages that I may preach to them also. So Jesus' restlessness is not confined. So beloved in Christ, having reflected on these profound words of the, the experience of Job and Paul and Jesus, what is the missionary challenge? The missionary challenge is this, beloved. We can either mismanage our restlessness, our restless energy, and let it go wild. Or we have an opportunity to channel our restless energy. You ever encounter a wild child? We have the option to become like a wild child. A wild child is someone who doesn't have boundaries, who have not learned boundaries, who have not learned to manage their, their energy, their gifts. We can either be like a wild child. You see, beloved, you and I have an enormous reserve of intellectual, emotional, sexual, physical energy. We have more reserves of these energy than Trinidad and Tobago has in, has in gas and oil. However, the question is, how do we tap that energy? How do we process that energy in a similar manner that you tap and reserve your oil and gas reserves? The fundamental lesson we learn from Job and Paul and Jesus is that they did not isolate themselves in times of trouble, criticism, crisis, or overwhelming demand. We also can learn from Jesus who invested in developing a rhythm, a routine of life that included investment in friendship, investment in ministry, and in solitude. You and I, beloved in Christ, must invest. We must develop a rhythm or a routine around nurturing friendships. Friendships, beloved in Christ, grounds us in reality. Only friends can tell us the truth. Isn't that so? Only friends can challenge us and love us. Friendships provide genuine support. Friends do not judge us but accompany us and listen to us. Friends are God's divine intimate presence to us. Second, we must invest and develop a routine, a rhythm around being present to those who are wounded, those who are poor, those who are broken. 
These people remind us of our own poverty, of our own weakness. These persons provide an opportunity for us to encounter God. They provide us an opportunity to challenge, to channel God's love. And finally, we must invest, we must develop a rhythm and a routine around solitude. Solitude is a moment that helps us to become aware of what's happening within us, our fears, our resistance. Solitude, solitude helps us to be aware of what's happening around us and in people's lives. So beloved, the missionary challenge is that you and I must develop a rhythm, a daily rhythm, a daily routine around friendships, human, ministry, human needs and solitude. For these three are like oil and gas platforms in the restless seas of our lives that we can use to channel our energy to build God's kingdom. We must use these three areas of our lives to establish a daily routine, a daily rhythm in which we can anchor ourselves. And in that regard, I refer you to chapter four of, of the famous book that I keep reminding you in which Matthew Kelly reflects on um, Benedict's rule of the importance of a daily routine and rhythm. So beloved, I ask you, do you have a rhythm? Do you have a routine? Does your family have a daily routine and rhythm around friendships, encountering human wounds and solitude? If you don't, today's readings, today's witness of Paul, Job, and Jesus challenges us and challenge each family, each community, build a daily routine and rhythm around these three things. For these will enable us to tap into our energy, to, to, to manage our energy, and to use our energy like Job, Paul, and Jesus to build the kingdom of God. Amen.